Joining us now, outgoing White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield. Kate, it's it's great to have you on your very last Morning Joe interview as uh, Communications Director. Want to look back a little bit, but let's first get you to continue to work a little bit. I'd like for you to comment on what's happening uh, with President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. Um, it's sort of hanging in the balance here. Is there a backup plan? Well, first of all, Mika, look, we are confident that the program is legal. Uh, the government made a compelling case that opponents uh, of, of the um, uh, of the plan uh, don't have standing here. Now, obviously, we're not going to prejudge the outcome uh, of the court's decision, but I think it's important to take a step back and recognize that what President Biden is doing is trying to ensure that working class people, middle class people all across this country have breathing room. And opponents of this program are trying to prevent that from happening. And we know at the end of the day that uh, when middle class families have more breathing room, that's good for the economy across the board. People have more money to you know, buy a home or start a business. So, you know, I think it's important. We're not going to prejudge the outcome uh, of, of the court's right. decision. Obviously, that's for the court to do. Um, but uh, I think it is important for people to understand and to think about uh, what is actually at, uh, uh, at question here and who President Biden is fighting for. So, um, and again, uh, what's the next move, though, depending on whether or not this goes through, if it doesn't? And also, let's add to the question, what is on the plate for the next communications director? Well, look, across the board, President Biden has an economic plan that is about, uh, again, giving breathing room to working class and middle class people. So in everything he does, from lowering prescription drug costs, which he did with the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, to bringing down energy prices, which he's also done through uh, numerous actions he's taken over the last couple of years, to lowering people's utility bills, to, again, working to try to provide relief from student debt for middle class and working families. Everything that he does when he is uh, pushing forward his economic agenda is about giving people that breathing room. So again, we're not going to get ahead of the courts, uh, the courts process, and certainly uh, court watchers uh, will assess at different moments in the uh, in this case how they believe the outcome uh, will land. But we'll ultimately see what the court does, and we'll go from there. In terms of uh, things on the plate of the next communications director, I can say uh, it is an enormous, enormous amount. Uh, and Ben mm -hmm. LeBolt, who's coming in to take my role, is uh, is exceptional, phenomenal, will be terrific uh, in this role. But you know, for any communications director, the job is to take President Biden's directive, to take the things that he's trying to get done for working people and ensure that we're talking about them in a way that people uh, can understand and relate to. And that's something that uh, will be top of, of mind for Ben as he's moving forward in this job. And about Ben, um, would you advise him to ask the president to consider visiting East Palestine? Well, the president will make his own decisions about uh, where he goes. But look, he himself has actually answered this question. And what he said was within hours of this uh, accident happening, there were folks on the ground from EPA, folks on the ground from CDC. And uh, the president has been in direct contact with the governors of uh, both impacted states, uh, with elected officials in both impacted states, and has told them repeatedly that he will provide them with everything that they need. And we've seen that. The EPA has been on the ground. Administrator Regan uh, has been on the ground. Ground. They've knocked on 550 doors, uh, speaking to essentially almost every home in that community to ensure that they have what they need, that they know where to go to get resources uh, while they're doing this. And ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, it is on Norfolk Southern, it is on the, the company to, uh, to make people whole, to pay for the mess that they made. And Secretary Buttigieg and Administrator Regan and everyone across this government are going to continue to push until that happens. So, Kate, uh, I want to just get your reflections. Uh, it must, it must be, feel so weird to be on the cusp of leaving this job, given how much of, of your life and, and your heart you have devoted to this presidency, to service. Um, and you have fought hard. I mean, we're friends, but we've also we've fought on the phone. And I remember some pretty tough we, phone calls that you and I have, have enjoyed. Oh, yeah. We Pacing have. my backyard, yelling at Kate. <laughs> no, but the, <laughs> but the, the truth is that that, you know, you believed very much in what you were doing um, and and felt strongly enough to to make sure you advocated uh, for your role. And I'm curious what you're going to miss the most. I, I assume it's not fighting with me. <laughs> 
That's going to be extremely high on my list. Actually, just <laughs> promise you'll promise you'll pick up your phone when I call, just to like fight for old time's sake, even if we have nothing to fight <laughs> of over. Of course. Uh, no, it's it's actually. I mean, you summed it up quite beautifully. It's it is actually hard to uh, put my finger on exactly what I'll miss the most. Obviously, I will miss the president tremendously. I will miss this team who I have uh, been in the trenches with since many of them since before we even launched our primary campaign in April of 2019. And you really develop. You know, as I know, I'm sure a lot of people watching can relate to, you know, when you're in these really intense jobs, you develop these really strong bonds with the people you work with and they become kind of like family. And so uh, mm. I will definitely miss them every single day. And, mm. you know, the other thing I will miss about this job that is so extraordinary is you have the opportunity to talk to essentially experts in their field on any topic under the sun. And so, you know, when you're working on an issue that springs up and you're trying to work through, how do we talk about this? How do we explain it? You can, you get, you know, on the phone and in the room with people who have dedicated their lives to that issue and can tell you in great detail about things that you would have never even considered without the benefit of their uh, experience. So I, I just having that at my fingertips and the, the honor uh, that that is, um, I'm going to miss that tremendously. So really, I'm going to miss mm -hmm. all of it, if you want to put a fine point on it. <laughs> hey, Kate, John nice. Lemire, congrats on the Hi, end of your thank run. thank you. Good to see thank you. you. Um, obviously, you're heading out, but there are challenges on the horizon uh, for those you're leaving behind there in the West Wing, in particular, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. So could you preview for us, please, how the building has prepared for the upcoming clashes over the debt ceiling, but also the GOP-led probes into the administration? Sure. Well, look, on the GOP-led probes, I think that the country, and we saw, you know, I, I would argue, and again, I'd argue carefully as I'm standing here for the last 12 hours at this spot uh, in front of the White House, I would argue carefully uh, on politics here because there are limits on what I can say. But, you know, I think that in November of this past year, people made very clear that they want to see their elected officials, Democrats and Republicans, focused on economic issues, focused on kitchen table issues, focused on what they care about. And so, uh, you know, as the House Republicans put these, you know, personal investigations, these highly political investigations, you know, front and center in their agenda, I think they're showing the American people uh, where their priorities are. And, and I think that's out of line with where the American people uh, want their government to be. So, uh, you know, certainly we will not, as a White House, we are not going to stand for uh, smears and misinformation. Uh, but also we're going to remain fully focused on pushing forward our agenda, which is about getting things done for working people. So, uh, you know, and then in terms of the debt limit, I mean, the president has been very clear. He is over the last two years advanced an agenda that has reduced the deficit 1.7 trillion dollars he is putting forward on march 9th his budget that is going to build on the progress that we've made over the last two years it's going to continue to bring down costs it's going to continue to give working people breathing room and it can we can do all of that while continuing to bring down the deficit so he's going to put that on the table on march 9th he has asked repeatedly for the republicans to do the same so that we can have a genuine conversation about how we move forward and he's hoping that they will work with him in good faith on that. But he's not willing to negotiate over the full faith and credit of the United States. And ultimately, that is a question of whether the Republicans are going to uh, are going to allow the country to pay our debts uh, or whether the Republicans are going to uh, move us into default.